What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel, and today we're going to be continuing going through the projected standings of each of the Power Four conferences across college football. And in this video, we will be talking about the Big Ten Conference. I just want to let you guys know that earlier this summer, I went through and predicted each and every one of the 134 college football teams across the FBS level of college football. And hey, if you want to know more information about any of the teams you see on screen or any other team across the nation, please go back and watch as many videos as you would like, as we are just less than a week away as of recording this video, five days away from the college football season uh, for whether you include today or not, whatever. We are so close to the college football season. And I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video because it really does help support the channel. Hey, continue to support the channel in any way you can, whether that's subscribing and ringing the bell, of course, watching this video and my other videos, liking, commenting, sharing, or anything else that I haven't mentioned. Feel free to do whatever it is you please. And just, again, thank you guys for your support of the channel this summer and your continued support as we head into the college football season. If, you're as, if you are as excited for the college football season as me, you're definitely going to want to know what I have to say during the season. you got to hit that subscribe button. It is a must-do. We're going to dive on in talking about the Big Ten. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys what else is coming up this week. So obviously today, we're going to be going through the Power Four conferences giving you my projected standings for said conference. When we go ahead and go through the rest of, or I should say later on uh, this week, uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, I will be uploading my preseason top 25. So I'll update that uh, from May for all you fine people and get that out there. I will also be uploading on Thursday, the biggest game of week zero, our first prediction of the season, Florida State and Georgia Tech, with either on Thursday or Friday, the rest of the week zero games. So there are only four on slate this year. Uh, and then, again, you can enjoy your college football weekend. And next week, we'll wrap things up by predicting, or I should say going through my projected standings for each of the group of five conferences. Then we'll go through my college football playoff predictions, as well as just some other things I'm excited about for the season. And then, bam, we are getting in to uh, week one predictions, predicting the biggest matchups, and telling you what else to watch out for in week one. So all of that is to come here over this next week, and, or I should say over the rest of this week and next week as well. Oh, man, it is so good to have college football back. We talked about the SEC already, so go watch the, that video after this one. But now we are talking about the Big Ten. And the Big Ten has plenty of new faces this year. Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA have all joined the conference. You can see where they all sort of stand here. But again, much like we did in the, S, uh, in the SEC with the Big Ten here, we're going to start towards the top, talk about teams, some more so than others, that sort of piqued my interest, why I sort of have them there. We'll go towards the bottom. And at the end of the day, right down here, I'll tell you why I have my predicted conference championship game. In fact, I'm going to tell you that right off the bat. Apologies if you heard any sort of background noise there. That was just something that happened outside in my building. But anyways, again, I'm going to tell you why I have the conference championship prediction I do right now. And it's because I think these are the best two teams in the conference. There's no doubt in my mind that Ohio State and Oregon are the number one and number two in whatever order you please to have them in. Best teams in the conference. They play each other during the regular season in Autzen. They play each other, at least what I'm predicting, in the conference championship game here. And who knows, they could play for a third time in the college football playoff. Uh, I don't think I expressly said that when I was talking about Georgia and Texas, but same philosophy with Georgia and Texas. I think they're the best two teams in the conference. They're the two teams that I have in my conference title game. And much like Georgia and Texas, Ohio State and Oregon are two of the four or five best teams in college football this season. Ohio State is loaded from top to bottom. Will Howard just got named the starting quarterback, which I think was the right move for the Ohio State Buckeyes. He is going to be giving them sort of a dual threat edge. Something that Kyle McCord really wasn't able to give them was much with his legs. Kyle McCord, more of a guy that likes to sit in the pocket and throw. Again, a guy that got a lot of criticism. Will Howard is even getting some criticism before the season even started, but the Buckeye offense is loaded. The wide receiver room is loaded. When Sean Judkins is coming over from the old, to is coming over from Ole Miss to pair with Travion Henderson. You take a look at the defensive side. Defensive line could be the best in college football. Linebacking room is as experienced as they've had in quite some time. And then that defensive back room, you add Caleb Downs to an already loaded room. I mean, the Buckeyes are one of, if not the most talented team across college football. That's why I have them 12-0. That's why I have them beating Oregon on the road. Uh, and it's why I have the Buckeyes in the conference championship game. But again, Oregon is right there with them. And Oregon can just as easily beat the Buckeyes in Austin. That really is a toss-up game. It could go either way for me. And 
Maybe a little bit of bias slipped in there. Sure, okay, you can say that, whatever. But Oregon is very capable of winning that game. Dylan Gabriel is going to be fantastic this year. They absolutely loaded up on defensive transfers again. Uh, they got Evan Stewart coming over from Texas A&M to pair with Tez Johnson and that ridiculous wide receiver room they have there as well. Oregon, much like Ohio State, th those are the two most talented teams in the Big Ten and two of the most talented teams in the entire country. We're going to skip over the team that I have in third, and again, they're purely in third for tiebreaker reasons uh, because they have the head-to-head -head over the team that is below them. And then, again, the, the team that also has the 7-2 and two record there with the Michigan Wolverines doesn't play either of those two teams, and they just kind of are there based on overall record. But I want to talk about Penn State first because Penn State, you could probably argue, is the third most talented team here in this conference and probably a team that you could see in the college football playoff. But for the Penn State Nittany Lions, they do have to figure some things out. Now, they have a really good running back duo. The wide receiver, I think, is going to be underrated this year. The defense, you're going to have Abdul Carter moving to more of a true position as an edge rusher this year with uh, some really good defensive back seven players. Penn State's going to have a very good defense, and the offense is going to be solid. But can the downfield passing attack develop? Can Drew Aller develop that downfield ball if he can? Well, you could see Penn State just as easily contend for a spot in the Big Ten title game. If he doesn't, well, Penn State still might be playing second fiddle to some of the more top powers in the Big Ten Conference. Michigan, after winning the national title, and look, all outside stuff from Michigan aside, just talking about the players that are on that roster, the coaching staff they have, Michigan's still going to be a good football team this year. They're still going to be a team that's going to push for the college football playoff. Nine and three here might overall as a team be underselling what Michigan is going to be this year. But I mean, when you take a look at to what my three predicted losses for them were, Ohio State, Oregon, and Texas, three teams that I think are going to be top four teams in college football. People might be saying I'm underrating the Michigan Wolverines. I don't know if I think Ohio State, Oregon, and Texas are going to be better than them. I think I'm rating them just about right, but Michigan absolutely has the potential to be 10-2, and two, to even be 11-1. and one. Again, those are going to be some really hard games for them to win, but they've beaten Ohio State before. They can absolutely beat Oregon. The Texas game is going to be tough, but they have it at home. They can get that one done. They got a lot of good talent. Donovan Edwards is back. Some very key important defensive pieces return. And while I don't love that quarterback room, no one in that quarterback room needs to be a savior, right? They just need to be solid. They need to be pretty good. Uh, and Michigan can easily see their way to the college football playoff. I'll even talk about Iowa here as well, because Iowa, I mean, look, we know the story with Iowa. They're going to have a great defense, and they need to get that offense fixed, right? We'll see how good the offense is going to be. Cade McNamara has not performed that well. Maybe Brendan Sullivan takes over to be the starting job there. It, it just... It really all depends for Iowa on how, on how good the offense is going to be and how much it improves, which is a big mystery. The same could be said for USC, but the flip-flop. We know the offense is going to be good. Miller Moss, the starting quarterback, has a loaded wide receiver room, and the offense, again, should be one of the best in the Big Ten this year. The defense, though, has what's given Lincoln Riley trouble at USC over his past couple seasons, especially last year, and is what has kept USC from, I think, really becoming – they're the true version of what they can be, right, and being the best version of themselves. Well, uh, they got DeAnton Lynn coming over, made UCLA a really good defense last year. You could do the same thing at USC this year. Okay, I've rambled on enough about some of the teams here. It's time to talk about what a lot of people out there would consider a surprise. That's the Wisconsin Badgers at 9-3, and 7-2 and two in conference. I believe my losses for them, uh, I'll actually go fact check that. Okay, it is what I thought they were, but I wanted to make sure. It's Oregon in conference, it's USC in conference, and then Alabama out of conference. But honestly, guys, with the talent that I think Wisconsin has this year, you get Tyler Van Dyke in. I think there's a lot of underrated pieces in that wide receiver room. We know what kind of caliber defense Luke Fickle and company are going to play with. And I just think Luke Fickle overall is going to get things more so figured out in Madison this year. And again, they purely are in third place because of tiebreakers. Do I think they're more talented than Penn State or Michigan? No, that's not what the standings video is projecting. It's just sometimes when, again, in Wisconsin, definitely has a little bit more of a favorable conference schedule than most. They don't play Ohio State. They get Penn State at home. They don't have to play Michigan, even though they get Iowa on the road. I think they pick up a big one there. So, okay, maybe I take that back. They do have some some games there to where, yeah, it's going to be difficult to win. Oregon State, Penn State, or sorry, not Oregon State, Oregon, Penn State, 
again, those are going to be very tough games. But overall for Wisconsin, I think Van Dyke is going to fit into that system well. I think Wisconsin is going to be able to take a jump from where they were last year and be fairly competitive. Do I think they're going to make the conference championship game? No, but I do think they're going to be a surprise this year. They're sitting for me at 9-3. and three. Let's talk about Nebraska and Rutgers down here. Two teams that I think you got to watch out for this year. Watch out for Nebraska because Dylan Royola, I think, is a stud. Brought in a lot of good wide receiver transfers. One of the best defensive rosters and defensive coaching staffs in the country. Nebraska should start to rise back up to be uh, one of the better programs in the college football world this season. Pretty solid record in conference. Husker fans, I really don't see a way you miss out on a bowl game this year. Knock on wood because, well, of what has happened with Nebraska in the past. Rutgers is here as well, and Rutgers can be a team that can surprise this year, although I think the ceiling with that team is a little bit diminished just because of the quarterback situation. While Ethan Kaliak Manis has some solid abilities, again, didn't fare that well at Minnesota, and I don't love him as much as I like some of the other players Rutgers could have gotten from the portal, but the defense is going to be outstanding. They got some good skill position players. Kyle Manungai is back, uh, and overall Rutgers, I think just going to be another solid team in the Big Ten this year. Minnesota and Washington are right here at seven and five as well, both boasting four and five records in conference. It'll be a struggle for Jed Fish and the Washington Huskies in his first year, but for uh, the Washington Huskies, still got some solid talent. Will Rogers is in, some guys through the portal, both offensively and defensively. I think it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag for the Huskies this year after making the national title a season ago, but give Jed Fish a little time. He'll be able to get the Huskies back towards the top half of the Big Ten Conference. And Minnesota is here as well. An interesting team to me because I think it all depends on how a couple things with the offense fit out. They got to replace Brevin Span for, they got to fill in some gaps in that running back room, in that wide receiver room, and they do have to replace Kaliak Manis at the starting quarterback position. But quarterback play is going to improve from them this year. They got Max Brosmer over from New Hampshire, where he was an exceptional quarterback. Uh, for New Hampshire last season. I think they found a diamond in the rough. I think he's going to provide some really good things. If the defense can continue to play to P.J. Flex standard, watch out for the Golden Gophers this year. They could be dangerous in a team that easily I could see being higher on the standings board than I have them right here. And then you start to get into the teams that could see some difficult seasons. All those 10 teams that I just listed right or uh, 11 teams I just listed right there, I think make it to bowl games, and I think Illinois does as well. I think Luke Altmaier is going to find a little bit more consistency at the quarterback position this year. Some solid transfers come in both offensively and defensively. And it was just a struggle for Brett Bielema's group last season. And I think it gets better, although with Illinois, it's very tough for me because I could also see them missing a bowl game pretty easily. But I think there was one more team out of the Big Ten between Illinois, Michigan State, and Maryland that was going to get into a bowl game, maybe even throw Northwestern in there as well. And I decided to go with the Illinois Fighting Line. I still like Luke Altmaier, even though at points he just was downright horrible last season. I think he'll get better with that Fighting Illini squad. Brett Bielema will be a little bit better this season. Michigan State. I also think it's going to be better this year, but it's going to take time for Jonathan Smith to get everything figured out and for the, uh, him to get Michigan State to a bowl game. Why? Well, not only does that team just, I think, need to get some of uh, Jonathan Smith's players in there, get some recruits in there, even though Aiden Childs is over, I think he'll fare pretty well, still got some good defensive pieces. Michigan State needs a culture change, and when a team and when a program needs a culture sh change, it takes a little bit longer than maybe expected to sort of get that program back up into a bowl game position or back to whatever relative expectation was necessary, uh, or not maybe not necessary, but whatever relative expectation that program had, right? Michigan State's going to be a little bit better this year. Jonathan Smith was the right guy for the job. And don't be discouraged by a 5-7 and seven record if that does happen. The culture is going to need to change first, and then the football team will get better. Maryland, I also see missing out on a bowl game. They lost a ton of offensive pieces from last year, but the defense improved drastically last year. Lost some good pieces. They get some good pieces back. Defense should still be solid. Maybe a little regression for them. Regression on the offense as well because Talia Tungabailoa is gone, and some other good weapons are gone there as well. Maryland's just a team that, I mean, I find it hard for them to make it to a bowl game this year. Definitely possible with the pieces they have. MJ Morris coming in to play quarterback, but I see them ultimately falling short. You look at Purdue, Northwestern, UCLA, and Indiana. Teams I think are going to sit towards the bottom end of the conference, but I actually want to talk about the team you see at the bottom of the standings board first. And the only reason they are at the bottom is because of all the tie-breaking situations here, right? Because I think Northwestern's going to beat them. I think UCLA is going to beat them. And 
whatever have you there, right? Because I think Indiana's one win in the Big Ten I projected to be against Maryland and Northwestern UCLA. The only wins they have in Big Ten play are against Indiana. So again, that's kind of why Indiana's down here at the bottom. But they are the team out of anyone in this bottom four, maybe even bottom five, that could excel really greatly this year. Kurt Signetti is coming in as head coach. They brought in a ton of talented transfers, including a lot of guys that just played for Signetti at James Madison last season. Watch out for the Hoosiers because if they get hot and they get rolling, that could be a very dangerous team this year. But you take a look at the other three squads, and I just think it's going to be a struggle. I've mentioned before how much I don't like UCLA. Coaching turmoil, a lot of roster turnover, even though some good returning and transfer portal pieces. I just don't think it's all going to fit together well for the Bruins this year. Northwestern, look, I think what Ryan Braun did last year with the Wildcats was amazing. I just don't necessarily see it being replicated. They got some weird stadium things going on up there as well. And very well when you're looking at the talent, the Northwestern consistently just doesn't overall have – talent comparable to the rest of the Big Ten Conference, yet they still find ways to win. They'll find ways to be competitive. And Ryan Braun, I still think, again, the right guy for the job after everything happened with Pat Fitzgerald. But overall, I don't see it being that successful for Northwestern this year. And Purdue, Hudson Card is still there. Got some pretty good weapons offensively and defensively. And while it's a struggle for them, they got some hard non-conference games, Oregon State, Notre Dame, uh, and a fairly difficult conference schedule as well. But I do think they pick up a couple of wins. Three and nine might be a little discouraging, but two and seven record in conference, that's nothing uh, to be ashamed of there. Either as Ryan Walters, young head coach, continues to try to figure things out and get that system uh, in place. Hudson Card will be good for them, but I think otherwise Purdue's going to have a struggling season. Again, no doubt in my mind, Ohio State, Oregon are the best two teams in the conference with the Buckeyes winding up as Big Ten champs. Yes, uh, Michigan just lost a lot of talent. Penn State, again, I'm not uber confident in Aller getting that downfield ball fully developed. And Wisconsin, even though they'll be better, I just don't think will contend for a Big Ten title. Iowa could get there, maybe USC, maybe even a team like Nebraska. But Ohio State and Oregon, no doubt in my mind, the two most talented teams here, they will be playing in Indianapolis with the Buckeyes coming out on top and likely getting that first round by as an undefeated conference champion. Let me know what you guys think and what should be mixed around. What would you change? Leave it, leave it in the comments section below. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. And we'll move on to the Big 12 Conference. Goodbye.